What's going on, guys? It's Nez with the Badge Bros. Today, breaking down the slate for August 5th. It is August 5th. It's Monday. We have a loaded slate. $60,000 in prizes up on Underdog Fantasy, including a $50,000 Monday moonshot. Eight-game slate. It's perfect. Weather looks good. I'm going to break it down. We'll do a draft after I break down the slate. We'll do a pick em entry after I break down the slate. And then we'll check out some of these best ball tournaments that are going on right now as well as a little bonus for those that are interested in that. If you guys aren't subscribed, go ahead and uh, subscribe to the channel. It helps us out. We're just, you know, you know small, small time creators here doing, doing big time things. But uh, subscribe to the channel. We cover underdog fantasy contests every single day on the show. We're, we're doing best ball drafts. Uh, we're doing daily drafts, and we do all the sports. We're doing baseball because it's baseball season. We're going to do football season. We do NBA. We do it all around here on Underdog Fantasy. So go ahead and sub and give the video a like if you have not done that already. So let's take a look at this slate, man. Like I said, $50,000 to uh, the the main contest today, which is awesome. We hardly ever see 50 k uh, for one contest, but we are seeing that lately for the Monday main slate the monday moon shot so this is awesome 150 max entries as you can see i've already done 20 entries myself and uh it looks like uh the, the red Sox are going to be pretty easy to draft today which is uh which is great news for us let's break down this slate game by game here first game on the docket we've got arizona Diamondbacks versus the Cleveland Guardians. Arizona is facing Logan Allen. Logan Allen's a lefty, so we care a lot about the righties for Arizona. However, they're missing one of their biggest right-handed hitters in Christian Walker. He's still not playing. We do have Cattell Marte, though. Very much into him. Josh Bell from the right side is not the hitter that I would like to get to. Jock Peterson has an ADP of 27. He's probably not going to play. Corbin Carroll likely to hit at the bottom of the lineup. But Lourdes Gurriel, Eugenio Suarez can definitely get clicked. But for me, Arizona is not a team that I am excited to get to. But Logan Allen, typically a pitcher that when I see him on the slate, I would like to attack. But it's kind of hard to to get there today, given the other options that we have available and the fact that the Diamondbacks are down uh, Christian Walker just makes a big deal from the right side there. So uh, I'll, I'll have some Diamondbacks today, but I'm not overly excited about about getting there. The Guardians, they are facing uh, Zach Gallen and Zach Gallen, a very good pitcher, and we are. Not overly excited, not really excited at all necessarily to uh, to draft Guardians, but I like when the Guardians face a right-handed pitcher. Zach Gallen has had his fair share of woes this season with injuries, but he is pitching pretty well when he is uh, healthy and active. But Jose Ramirez, Stephen Kwan, Josh Naylor, Lane Thomas, for me, all the, the top four of that lineup is very interesting to me. Uh, in, in a spot that I do not think that they're going to get drafted in hardly at all. We have the the wind tunnel effect, uh, you know, real or fake, but left-handed power seems to be playing up in Cleveland. So don't sleep on the Guardians when you are building out your portfolios uh, for, for today. We'll hop over to the Roto Grinder screen just to give you a look at the at the total here, eight and a five, eight and a half run total here. Uh, favored towards the the Diamondbacks, which I would expect. But as you can see here, Randall Grichik, uh, Newman also hitting uh, from the right side, and then Gabby uh, Moreno also. So there are take a look at these right-handed bats against Logan Allen and uh, give it some strong consideration, in my opinion. N not one that I'm going to be getting to often, but I will make sure that my bases are covered there. Real quick, just to take a look at the weather. Doesn't seem to be too much of an issue anywhere. Uh, Cubs and Chicago, or Cubs and uh, Cardinals, St. Louis and Chicago, uh, some potential trouble spots, but everything's going to play today, and uh, we, we should feel good about these games. So it's always nice when you don't have to worry about the weather, and we can just draft with peace of mind using 
our takes and our projections or whatever you'd like to, to use. The Reds today. Uh, let's talk about this next game, Reds versus Marlins. As you can see here, eight and a half run total, 4.6 implied for the Reds, 3.8 implied for Miami. This is in Miami. This is uh, this is not in Cincinnati. If this is in Cincinnati, we can only imagine what this, uh, what this run total would be at, but we're just looking at 4.6 uh, in Miami, which is a worse offensive environment, but – uh, I say that because that's 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 a pretty good number to be in Miami. And when Ellie is facing a righty, we like to draft Ellie De La Cruz. So Ellie, just the top of this lineup in general, maybe mixing Jake Fraley, all very, very appealing against a Miami team that has waved the white flag on the season. Uh, Munoz, uh, Rodri Munoz is uh, not a good pitcher. Uh He's faced 133 batters this season. Uh, I believe that's from the right side and giving up a 670 slug from the right side. I mean, that is unbelievably poor. So or for, for that'd be from the left side. Yeah, here, let me just let me just pull up the uh, the fan graph splits so you guys can see this yourself here. This is uh, for Munoz. And as you can see, you can see where it says handedness. That that left side of the plate, only 133 uh, batters faced, but it's a good enough sample for me to know that this guy uh, is in deep trouble against Ellie De La Cruz, and Ellie is uh, just not that hard to draft today. Ellie has a 13.7 ADP as of right now. That's going to climb, but that is that is just way too cheap for a guy with power with speed going up against a poor right-handed pitcher. So this is uh this is a great buy opportunity for, for Ellie and to stack them up is, uh, is very easy as well. As you can see, all of his teammates are freely available today against a not great pitcher with a pretty decent run total uh, for the reds. They have Nick Martinez on the mound as the, uh, I believe he's the bulk reliever. I'm not sure that he's actually getting the start today, Regardless, I can't really see myself getting to Miami. Nick Martinez is not a bad pitcher and just not a lot to get excited about in Miami. I can't imagine needing to have this team today, but, you know, famous last words. If you're going to do something, maybe a skinny of Xavier Edwards, Jake Berger, Xavier Edwards, uh, Jesus Sanchez. Nothing that, that you need to prioritize, in my opinion. Uh, Giants and Nationals. So we got Logan Webb versus Patrick Corbin. Hey, man, we love Patrick Corbin on the slate, even though he's been kind of a tough customer uh, as of late. But these last the, the last start was just a disaster for him. And uh, we get a chance to attack again with these righties for the Giants, of which there are many. There are many, many Giants here. So you have Fitzgerald, Canna, Chapman. Um, I'm, uh, I'll have to see here. I did not... Uh, Realize that Helio Ramos is uh, is he banged up right now? Because I don't see him. Yeah, he's questionable. Uh, he has a thumb injury. Good to know. So I would it, uh, the the Roto Grinders lineup projection does not <clears throat> does not include him in the, in their base lineup, which you can get other guys. So one thing that I will say is if you do draft him, you will get swapped. If you're not familiar. You draft a guy with the Q tag and he is not in the starting lineup that he will get marked as out. Nobody will be able to play him, but you do get a swap. So whoever was not drafted in that room based on your ranking set will be replaced. This has me uh, definitely excited to attack because the Giants just do not have ADPs that other than Matt Chapman and Tyler Fitzgerald. They don't have ADPs that would reflect uh, the matchup at hand today for them. <clears throat> As you can see, Chapman, Fitzgerald, Canna, uh, all right there for for the taking for us today. So this is a, this is a pretty nice spot uh, for for the Giants. It, it's it's a hot day. The wind is blowing out. This is definitely a, a team that I'm going to have quite a bit of, and, and I think I'm going to try to get to this Casey Schmidt play here. Uh, I, I like to draft Casey Schmidt, and uh, he's dead last as far as drafted players by the Giants today. So 
that's 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 very appealing uh for the nationals 3.7 total against logan webb uh depending on where you look they are the lowest uh projected stack today on the slate <clears throat> i am a logan webb respecter i love Wo- logan webb he's a great pitcher he's much better in san francisco and we have some hitting conditions today I don't mind doing like an Abrams, Garcia, James Wood type of stack, or maybe a, a you know pick two out of that three today. Actually, feels pretty pretty decent and should be very low owned uh, by the, by the field today. Uh, Abrams doesn't even have usually CJ Abrams against a, a right handed pitcher will have an ADP in in the high teens. He's undrafted today, so. Doing something with Abrams, Garcia, Wood, I think is a really good call. Super low owned. I would not make it a priority, but it's definitely uh, an intriguing look today. Let's hop over to the Texas series here. Uh, We have Astros versus the Rangers here. Uh, Eight and a half run total. uh, Two... Decent pitchers. I I think we can call Andrew Heaney a decent pitcher this season. He has some pretty good numbers on his side. But the one thing that we can say about Andrew Heaney is the last two starts of his have not been good. So that that could be that could be a trend here, right? We 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 always see Andrew Heaney, or at least we have in the past, and wanted to attack him because we know that he has those type of outings where, yeah, he can rack up seven strikeouts, but there's also eight earned runs and four innings pitched there. So I think we can ride the trend of Heaney not being good and, uh, and, and have some success with that. The Astros today are just not as expensive as, as they probably should be, but I get it, right? The Astros themselves are not hitting well. Heaney has not been terrible on the whole, but I think you can converge on these two things and know that there are good hitters in this Astros lineup, despite the fact that they have not had a great season. And we have Heaney, who is in the middle of regression. So Jose Altuve, Jordan Alvarez, Bregman, and Yainer Diaz today are just awesome plays, in my opinion. Put them all together in a lineup, three of four, two of four. Mixing this in, I think, will be a very important way to deviate from the field. Uh, Altuve and Alvarez look like they're going to be a popular pairing. Doesn't mean they're always going to be paired. Doesn't even mean they're always going to be drafted today. Uh, There will be a couple drafts where they're not drafted, but just because it's popular doesn't mean it's bad. Um, You can, uh, looks like, get leverage by actually stacking Bregman and Diaz to that stack because most people are probably going to skinny stack it or do a pair and three one-offs just based on these ADPs of Bregman and Diaz. It looks like there's strong leverage and pairing those two together with uh, Altuve or Alvarez, or just do those two even Uh, just to get yourself a unique combination from the field. uh, Definitely, definitely looks like a a sharp play today, in my opinion. And uh, we have Hunter Brown on the mound for the Astros today. Strong right-handed pitcher has his vulnerabilities. He just got banged up by the Pirates. Uh, let's go, Bucks! But uh, Rangers, I think if anything, you can probably just give yourself a one-off Corey Seager and uh, and call it because Seager is the only one of note in this lineup actually doing things lately. This uh, other than uh, Josh Smith, uh, Josh Smith hitting leadoff lately for them. Uh, why Langford has not been in the lineup lately. Uh, Nathan Lowe, uh, Nathaniel Lowe, rather, uh, left-handed hitter, just not having himself a very great season. So th- th- I say that out loud, and it's like, hmm, maybe this makes him a decent play because I everybody's thinking that, right? Nobody is thinking of these of these Rangers as though they are, they're, they're a smash play today. And it's because they're not. They're just straight up not. There are much better plays today at, And I mean, these prices aren't terrible, but if you're the type of person that drafts enough and you would like to have one of every stack, do do a Rangers stack. Go go ahead. Onslaught the Rangers. I think that's the best way to take advantage of them. Uh, But I don't think we're going to see early season Hunter Brown. That's that's all I'm going to say. 
Twins at Cubs. This is uh, probably this is probably my favorite game on the slate. It doesn't look like it should be on paper, but I, maybe I'm reading too far into this because I think everybody's going to see this eight run total. See, it's the Cubs. The Cubs have not had a good season, and I think they're just going to ignore it. Nobody really likes to play the Twins, even though the Twins are like a very good offense and they're facing Kyle Hendricks. Let's put that to the test here. If I type in Twins on underdog, so Royce and Buxton are are a tough pairing, but I do think they're going to be paired a good amount. Uh, And then the rest of the team is freely available, and there's some strong lefties on this team. And guys, I mean, Kyle Hendricks, 6.8 ERA this season. Uh, I just, it, it's hard to believe that he's still in the league. Just simply put, it's, it's hard to believe that he's still in the league. Um, and it's eight and an implied eight run total. So I, I, maybe I'm reading too far into it or Kyle Hendricks is like generational wealth opportunity waiting for us here. And I'm thinking the latter I'm thinking, screw it. Kyle Hendricks is not good this season. The twins are hot and they're good. Let's just roll with the twins. On the flip side, uh, David Festa on the mound for the Twins and uh, has not had a great start to his season either. He has some high K totals in his arsenal or in his bag, but seven runs given to the Tigers. He has another start of, I believe, six earned runs as well. So what does that tell me? That tells me that the Cubs are probably a pretty decent play today. I'm still of the belief it's been a whole season. They told me they're not good. I don't think the Cubs are a a bad offense, and I think they can get to bad pitching. This Q tag on Ian Happ uh, is not ideal. He was scratched yesterday, but Suzuki, Bellinger, uh, Michael Bush from the left side, and then maybe Paredes, uh, I, I think is definitely interesting today. You could probably wait to start drafting Cubs until we see their lineup. Let's see who, who who's playing because if Hap is in, it, you maybe maybe you don't want to get to them if Hap isn't in. I don't blame you, but I think that they're a pretty sneaky play today. I don't think Festa's a good pitcher. I think they still have good bats. I don't think they're going down easy this season, and I think the Cubs can can get drafted. Let's move on to the to the next game on today's slate, which is my second favorite game. It is the Red Sox versus the Royals. Nine and a half run total, 94 degrees in Kansas City. Ball is going to be flying. Let's go. Anytime the Red Sox, I almost said my Red Sox because they basically have been my Red Sox this season. But Red Sox against right-handed pitching just has me licking my chops all the time. All the time. Jaron Duran uh, is frequently my highest drafted player on slates, and it's likely to be that way again. He has an ADP of nine today. And while that's high, you can see here, uh, I did a, you know, a run of auto drafts just to see who I'm getting a lot of, who the field maybe is not valuing correctly. Um, that Jaron Duran, Jaron Duran's going earlier than nine. I I think I have him ranked fourth and in my run of auto drafts that I performed, uh, I got 40% Jaron Duran. So I would love to have that number stay the whole way, the entire day. Love Jaron Duran today in that big outfield in Kansas city, extra bases written all over it for him. Hot weather. Brady Singer is having himself a nice season, but he can be gotten to, especially by left-handed hitting. That's, that's his big weakness. So obviously Duran, give me Devers paired with him, Abreu. It's Abreu's coming off a huge game, two huge games uh, in Texas. So he's a little priced up because people know it. Uh, Yoshida though is, is just here for the taking as is Dom Smith. So you can pair some lefties that are lower, that are drafted less and, uh, and, and, probably have yourself some success. The Red Sox are going to be a huge part of my portfolio. On the flip side, we have the Royals. The Royals are facing James Paxson, big maple, big lefty, big stinky. Not very good this season. Paxson just gave up a boatload of runs 
in Boston, and now he's going to Kansas City, where he's got to face Bobby Witt, Sal Perez, Hunter Renfro from the right side, and they're likely to crush. You wouldn't know it. Only Bobby Witt is drafted 100% of the time. That is crazy. That is absolutely crazy. This is a great spot to get overweight Renfro, Sal Perez, maybe even like saying screw the platoon matchup because Vinny Pascantino is a lefty and just get just mix and match these Royals as you see fit. They're the highest, if not one of the highest run totals on the slate today at, at 509. They are indeed the highest, uh, or, or Giants are higher at 523. But case, in, you know, my point stands second highest run total on the slate today. And People can't be bothered to to draft them. So now we go. Now we go. White Sox at Oakland. Uh, J- JP Sears, my boy, against Jonathan Cannon. Uh, really like Sears today. Really like Sears today. Uh, if we look at ADP by ADP, Sears is SP6. That is awesome. I'm going to have no Brady Singer today. I hope he remains in this top five. But with the way pitching is laid out, right? Like Logan Webb is in a good spot, but um, the, it's good hitting weather there. You can sort of wait at pitching. I am uh, into the ceiling of glass now, uh, and I don't think anybody has a huge. I mean, uh, JP Sears, the last game, put up 21 fantasy points against the Giants. Nobody here that I think is going to separate in a meaningful way, but I love when we have six pitchers that. I am happy to take. This is uh, th- this is the hallmarks of just a generational slate. This is this is going to be awesome drafting. Uh, it- it- it's great. It's great stuff. That being said, I think Sears might end up being my highest drafted player. I have Glass now ranked very very high. Uh, because I, like I said, I like his floor ceiling combination here, and that has netted me a ton of glass. Now I have uh, 16 shares of glass now through 20 drafts. So we'll, we're going to correct that. We're going to correct that. I don't, I'm not, I'm not 80% confident in Tyler glass now, uh, but I am confident, but we are talking about white Sox and A's, but it's hard to not talk about other teams when talking about these two, because just nothing too exciting here. Other than the offense for Oakland is pretty decent. Having a nice matchup against Jonathan Cannon is very intriguing to me. The weather is fine. You know, not strong. You're never going to get strong hitting weather in Oakland, and they're in the Coliseum, so it's not a great hitting environment, but we're still looking at a 4.59 run total despite that. That's higher than the Red Sox today, and I was talking about the Red Sox quite a bit. The A's are a great play today. Uh, the, the top of this lineup, Butler, I kind of skip over Andujar, but the, you know you can do Andujar stuff. Vlade, Rooker, uh, Langliers, uh, love those guys. You could maybe throw in some Abraham Toro in there as well. Definitely mix and, max, mix and match the Oakland A's today. Uh, Rooker goes, but after that, man, nobody goes. So just just really strong opportunity to get leverage on the field. Um if I had to guess, the A's probably get drafted one out of ten times in, in these drafts. So that's like 1.6%, something like that, that they're going to be owned by the field. So if they go off, you're competing against 1% of the field. The A's are are just a great play today against Jonathan Cannon, who's just straight up just not very good. He's holding his own keeping runs to a minimum in his starts, but not a lot of K upside for him. He can be gotten to very clearly. Um, And then I don't want any White Sox today. Just straight up, if they beat me, they beat me. Congratulations. Tip my cap to whoever drafted the Red Sox, the White Sox. You know, maybe a Robert Vaughn skinny stack. That's, that's, I cannot go farther than that. And then the last game on the slate here, Phillies at Dodgers. This is a star-studded game. Uh, eight implied or eight run total here. Uh, Four point two implied for the Dodgers. Three point seven implied for the Phillies. 
This is a tough one because the Dodgers are watered down without Freddie Freeman, without Mookie Betts. We do get Will Smith in the lineup. We haven't had Max Muncy in the lineup pretty much all season. This is a watered down Dodgers lineup. Are teams going to pitch? Like, are, are the Phillies going to pitch to Shohei Otani? He's a good pick. He's the 101 and always will be uh, on slates. But stacking them does not feel overly exciting. I think I would do Otani, Teoscar, Will Smith for sure, but not all the time. And I don't. I'm going to have a pretty strong fade on the Dodgers today. And I don't even think Aaron Nola is that good, but like I will more than likely limit my Dodgers exposure exposure to just one off Otani and then stacking around that, that, that one Oh one on the Philly side here. Phillies against a righty are always intriguing because you get Schwarber and Harper in that advantageous uh, matchup there. Philly's lineup is loaded. Glasnow's a great pitcher, uh, but he can get hard. He can get hit hard. So I will have a few Philly stacks mixed in, but mostly drafting Glasnow rather than drafting Philly stacks. Uh, and Nola will be like my SP5 or 6 today. Hopefully he falls a lot as people see the matchup against L.A., and avoid them. I can see myself getting to a lot of Nola today. Like, I just don't think that this Dodgers lineup is anything special right now, but it's still the Dodgers. So just, just the fact that they have that Dodger blue on them, it does make them a little scary to, to fade, but I don't see this game killing us with the offense. The more, the more I think about it. So, Mostly the pitching for me, but I'm going to have a sprinkle of both teams mixed in my lineups today. So this is just a super fun slate, man. Super fun. Uh, Like I said, we got six very viable pitching options here. We've got some advantageous ADPs, in my opinion, uh, specifically with the Red Sox and definitely... <clears throat> with Oakland. These are the rankings that I did for, I, I did 20 auto drafts before I went to bed and uh, ju- just to see uh, how things were, were looking. And this is what I ended up with a ton of uh, Masataka Yoshida, a ton of Salvador Perez, a ton of Tyler glass now, but this is expected given how high I had him ranked but I'm fine with it because I didn't want these lineups to be totally dead. I knew I had uh, no Phillies, and I had two Bryce Harper shares. So hopefully those were ones that I avoided glass now. 40% Duran. Like, I like the way that these look. A lot of Lawrence Butler. That's fun. Devers was one that I was having trouble getting to because I like to prioritize Jaron Duran. But usually... Devers is going first. Let's hop in a draft and see uh, see what these lobbies are looking like in real time. Might have to uh, register on my phone. Oh, we're good. After this draft, we'll do a pick them as well. I'll go ahead and pull that up on the side here so we can get to looking. So I said I like the Red Sox today. Let's let's see see what we got here by Red Sox way. 2.25x home run on Devers. That's not uh that's not a multiplier that I like to play for a home run, but just to give you an idea of how power's playing there. Uh cuz Casey is not even a great place to hit home runs, so that has me kind of excited. Jaron Duran, one and a half total bases. I'm going to hit that. 2.75x spice on Tyler O'Neill home run. Okay. We'll, we'll go back to that. Let's check out what the lobbies are doing. I'll remove myself just, just for a moment here. We've got 
Brad at the two hole. Brad's a very good drafter. Uh, T box underdog legend, good drafter himself. So we'll see what these guys are doing. You can't really be too judgy based on what any one person does in a draft because maybe they're maybe Brad has a goal today of, or at least in this specific draft where yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna get a stack that I don't really get to today. I want to get it out of the way, know that I have it in my bag, and then proceed to draft uh, the good plays. I do it, no judgment on on my end. Uh, or I hope no judgment uh, cast it onto me whenever I do that as well. So this will be nice to see like what, what these rooms are actually telling us. Cause a lot of the times they don't line up with ADP. Bobby Witt 101. I would have expected Otani. Yeah, Otani does have the higher ADP. And then T-Box likes Chapman against Patrick Corbin. Royce Lewis. This all this all is making sense based on ADP. We're likely double tapping Red Sox. This guy's going to bleed the clock on us, but let's see where he goes. Catal Marte. Perfect. Yep. We are double tapping Red Sox. Thank you. And thank you. If I, if I kept rolling the six and Jaron Duran was there, I would probably do 60% Duran Devers, 40% Duran Ellie. Ellie being back here, I think is kind of crazy. So this is just how, Loaded the slate is though at the same time. Can't really blame anybody for drafting in the order in which they do. Um, just really like Ellie today. And speaking of Ellie, let's go back here and continue building out this pick 'em. Nothing for fantasy points yet for Ellie. I would like to to have that option. One point one X higher on stolen bases. Yeah, I'm I'm very much into into Ellie De La Cruz today. Let's check out the Royals. We've got Bobby Witt for two and a half total bases today. So I can actually uh yeah, totally understand the the Bobby Witt 101 there. Uh, and Sal Salvador Perez with a home run of 1.75x. I mean, offense is gonna be flying in Kansas City today. Uh for the Giants. Matt Chapman has uh, a, a, a docked total bases uh, pick him. I mean, so much offense today. All right, this TJ guy takes Willier Abreu from us. We'll, we'll have to pivot here. No stack either from the five hole going a one-off Altuve with Cattell Marte. T-Box stacking up the Giants, adding in Corey Seager. Brad likes Webb with, uh, with a little Jordan. Mm. And I like this uh, Wit Ellie Brent Rooker start from from the one hole. You can always complete that stack. I mean, yeah, obviously there's no rule that says you need to stack as fast as you can, but okay, Hunter Brown. That's an interesting pick there. So by Red Sox, Yoshida is still here. Dom Smith is still here. No need to, to force that. No need to force that. I love Matt Walner today. Michael Bush. Okay. I really like Buxton. I have a lot of Byron Buxton. He's has an ADP of 10. He fell to 18. Let's take Byron. And then is Willie Castro going to lead off today? He has been leading off for the Twins. We'll go Willie Castro, get another infielder, give us a little 2-2 stack, 
you can pretty much do anything we want after here. You can do two, two, one with a one off. That is, uh, we can make this a three, two, grab ourselves one more red sock or one more twin. And, uh, that, that feels good. I mean, this is, these are two of my, some of my favorite plays on the slate today, getting them, uh, at will is a, is a very fun, uh, very fun thing. With 150 max today, I do not think I will end up getting to 150. But I'll have to see what the fill rates are like. If it looks like the you know the the contest needs some more entries and potential overlay, okay, I'll get there. But I do see myself uh, stopping at 100 and then doing the the side contest today. But like I said, I will play that by ear more than willing to give underdog 50 more lineups for my shot at, at 5k. Who knows? Maybe we'll even go for a sweep of the leaderboard. That's always fun. Okay. Let's go back here and then we'll look at some twin stuff too. So Royce Lewis getting a little bit of a multiplier for his total bases has me excited. I just really think that this is a great opportunity to attack Cal Hendricks. And so we will. Jaron Duran, Royce Lewis here, uh, who I like the Yoshida quite a bit. There's no way. Hmm. Let me think this through here. Okay. Let's look at Hunter Renfro. Yeah, we like this. Okay, I'm on the clock. Let's take Aaron Nola. And then for my last trick... Let's do a one-off Hunter Renfro. Hunter Renfro has a lot of power. Going up against James Paxton, I don't think you're going to see Hunter Renfro drafted by himself very often. I like the idea of a one-off Hunter Renfro getting a home run, maybe even doing more than just hitting one home run today. But having him as a one-off, I think, is going could, could be uh, very advantageous. I would have been totally fine doing a stack there as well. I love Matt Walner today. Uh, I love these lefties from the Red Sox, but uh, we'll, we'll do a one-off run fro and uh, try to give ourselves a path to first because this is a big contest today, right? We're, we're facing over uh, over 5.6k entrance, so yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. Okay, so we have Duran, Royce Lewis, and Hunter Renfro here. Uh, let's check out Glass now. Pick them because uh, I did like that Glass now uh, play quite a bit. Seven and a half Ks, forty one and a half fantasy points. Hmm. Let, let's let's do uh, let's look at JP Sears. Four and a half strikeouts. We're getting a heavy dock on his pitching outs. 17 and a half. He did that against the Giants. He did that against <laughs> the Astros, but gave up seven earned runs in the process. We'll, we'll keep this at three. I like this. I like this three here. Full $25 entry. I'll put this in the description of the video so you guys can play along if you would like. And also, if you are watching this and you're not signed up on Underdog Fantasy, use code MLB. 50% deposit match up to $500, so that gets you $250 free if you are not signed up for whatever reason. Uh, definitely do that. This is a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun playing on here, uh, drafting with, with my buddies, against my buddies, I should say. Uh, and yeah, competing, it's a, it's a lot of fun. So 
that's my look at the slate today, guys. Uh, we don't have a late slate. It's just this main slate. It's awesome. It's eight games, a lot of good options. It closes a little earlier than than usual today. So the slate closes at 520 uh, Central Time, 620 Eastern. So get your drafts in. I'm going to be drafting all day. This is an awesome slate. 50K in prizes is not normal for MLB, but hopefully it is the norm moving forward for Mondays. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching. Peace. See you next time.